All right, hello everybody. Today we're going to learn about checking multiplication, double digit multiplication. Take a look at the board. Um, look at this mathematical fact. 2 times 6 equals 12. Is it true that 6 times 2 should always also equal 12? Yes, that is absolutely true. We know that if we flip factors, they become their twins and we get the same product. 6 times 2 also equals 12. Well, do you think that should work the same way? If 73 times 42 equals 3066, shouldn't 42 times 73 also equal the same number? It should. So, take a look. Let's do this together. 73 times 42. You don't know the multiplication table far enough to multiply 73 times 42, do you? So all you're going to do is multiply into a column like this. Let's walk it step by step. We're going to cover up the 4 in the tens place and we're going to multiply 73 times 2 just like you regularly used to. Seven or 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 times 4 or 7 is 14. Make sure that you align. The 6 is a 1's place, so it goes underneath the 1's place. The 4 is a 10's place, it goes underneath the 10's place. If you put this 1 in the wrong place, your whole answer will be wrong. So make sure alignment is crucial in double digit multiplication. We're going to then cover up the 2 and put a 0 in the place of the one's, uh, one's place because there will not be anything ever on the second line because we're multiplying by a tens place. 40 times 3 is a 12. It's 120, but we're going to carry the 100. We're going to write the 2 and carry the 100. 4 times 7 is 28 plus 1. And I'm going to line up the 20 in the thousands place and the 9 in the hundreds place. Okay, and then add 6 and 6, that's a 1, I'm going to carry just like I normally would. So that's how I got my 3,066, okay? So what we do to check if 73 times 42 really equals 3,066, we're going to flip the two factors. And we're going to multiply 42 times 73. And this is what it's going to look like. This is how you check. Double digit multiplication. And let's see. Now these numbers are not going to be the same because you're multiplying a little bit differently. 3 times 2 is still a 6 and 3 times 4 is your 12 right here. Okay? Now this number is not the same as this one. It's not. We flipped and we're not even looking at this. We're going to look at only the, the final product. The partial product are going to be different. So we're going to move, um, keep the zero there in the ones place and we're going to multiply 7 times 2. There's your 14, carry the 100. 7 times 4 is your 28 and your 9. 29. Okay? Then you're going to add these two. You have a 6. You have a 6, you have a 0, and a 1. Are they equal? Yes, they are. So all you're going to do is flip. Take a look. We're on 1A, and I did it for you. You're going to solve 73 times 42, and then you're going to check by multiplying 42 times 73. All you're doing is flipping. Same thing with 67 times 35. Solve that, and then flip. Write 35 first and then 67. Go ahead and pause and finish this. I'm going to go on to instructions for number two and I also want to go through section number three with you because I've seen a lot of problems in number three. But um, So the story problems are two steps because they give you the price of one pound of sliced turkey but the the girl bought several pounds, more than one pound. 
So you got to figure out how much the turkey is going to cost her. So that's your first step, and then you're going to find out how much she spent it on. For number 2B, it is also two steps. All right, so for number 3, this is 3A. 4 eighths is equal to what reduced. I've seen a lot of people pick a random number, but not the biggest number. You have to look for the biggest multiple that can divide both numerator and denominator. Denominator. If you only divide um, by 2, 4 can be divided by 2, and 8 can also be divided by 2, but you're only going to get a 2 fourths. If, if, you, if you divide by 2, you're going to get a 2 fourths. 2 fourths is not the lowest fraction it can be. 2 fourths still needs to be divided further. A lot of you just give me this answer. That's not correct. Okay, so you have to look for the biggest multiple. The trick here, you always look at this number and see if you divide this number by itself, can you also divide the denominator by that same number? Always look to see if the numerator is a multiple of both numerator and denominator. That's how you find the biggest common multiple. So um, if it's not, then you look, so you're kind of working backwards. You're going to look at the biggest one is 4, a number that can divide both 4 and 8. Yes, it is. So you're going to divide by 4. Okay? Always check to see if the numerator can also divide the denominator this by itself. So 4 divided by 4 and 8 divided by 4. You have 1 half. That's how you get it. Um, also, I want to see your work. I need to see this number that you're dividing by. Some of you just give me this right here. I, I need to see your work. Okay, you're going to start getting points taken off because I don't see what you've done. I don't necessarily need you to write it all out again like we did at the beginning. Copy this and divide again and write it out. But I do need to see the number you divided by. Okay? For example, in B, 3B, you have a 9 over 72. This is a perfect example of trying to divide by the biggest, absolutely biggest number. 9 is divisible by 3, but it's also divisible by itself. Take a look and make sure that you know that you can divide, you, you have to try to divide the numerator by itself and see if the numerator will also divide the denominator. Okay, that's how you find the biggest, absolute biggest number. So I need to see these two numbers and then they're going to equal 1 over what you put that answer in there for me. Okay? And that's about all I wanted to talk to you about. Good luck with everything else. And if you're watching this, you know you're not doing the green today.